Hello again. So in this video, we are going to talk about the classroom tools. I'm going to go into a bit more detail about all of the different tools we have um, and just show you individually what each little button does. So let's get into our classroom. Okay. So um, in this little video, we are going to look in much more detail at the tools that you have in the classroom. So um, our little toolbar is down here. Let's start at the start. Um, so I have my different colors here, so I can, you know, choose which color I want to use. Um, also if I have, um, my line here drawn, if I have an object or some text on the screen, I want to change the color, just select it and click on the color and it will change. Okay. So when I have an object on the screen, you can see there's three little controls. This one here on the right hand side, I can make it bigger or make it smaller. Uh, this one here, I can move it around. Usually you can also just drag it like that. And if I want to rotate it, I've got this one here. Okay, you'll see it's popping up saying Willem Abrook, this little text underneath. So that's me, it's my username, but also um, if you have a class, particularly a group class, and you've got a few different students writing things on the board, uh, if you hover over the item, it will tell you who's, you know, whose work this is or whose text or drawing this is. Okay. So I just clicked backspace there to, to delete it. Um, next thing, I have got my move tools. Oh, I need another object here, so let me, let me do a little man. Uh, beautiful. So um, first thing here, I can select and move an object. Okay, so I can move them around like that. Um, the next thing I can do is move the whiteboard, the, the canvas. So you can see you can move around like this. Now this might be useful, for example, if you have a very large um, document that you've uploaded for your class, you need to move around. Uh, and reset, I can, ah, let me move it like this. If I reset, it puts it back in the original position. Okay, so those are our move tools. Now let's go to our drawing tools. So we've got this pencil we've seen already, um, but I've also got this highlighter tool uh, so I can use it for filling in, or better yet, if I have some text, <laughs> sorry, some text, like that, um, I can then highlight that text, pick a color. So here you can see it's a little bit more transparent. This is very useful if you want to, you know, obviously highlight a document. Also, if you just want to fill in areas, it's a bit of a bigger pencil. The last little thing, I've got this eraser tool. So this is like a white paintbrush tool, you can think of it. So I can cover everything up there. Go again. All right, so um, those are my drawing tools. Next thing down, I've got some shapes. So kind of basic, I've got uh, some arrows, which are very useful sometimes. I've got a little tick, a little X. Um, I never really use these, but I can see, like with kids' classes, they could be quite useful. Um, let's change colors here again, maybe. Um, I've got a little square, a little box, and a circle, or an ellipse, depending on what you want to do. And then I've got the filled-in version as well, so a filled-in square, a filled-in circle. Okay. Next thing, um, I'm going to skip to the bottom here. I have this little thing, clear whiteboard. So you'll see there's two similar. If I want to select an item here, I can press my backspace like that to delete it, or I can click on this little remove selected object. It just does the same job. But I want to clear everything, so I'm going to click on clear whiteboard. It gives me a warning. Right, proceed, yeah, and I clear all of my notes. If I have a document here, the document will stay underneath and my notes will um, kind of uh, disappear from on top of it. Um, while we're talking about that, let me just load up a little document here. I have one. Let's use the same one I used before. Okay, so um, the next thing I'm going to show you is our text tool. So I think I did this in the first video already. So he seems to be getting better. I want to give the answer away. And again, I can change the color just like I did the last time. So I can make this bigger, make it smaller, stick it in here. Um, if I want to add some more notes, you know, I can say this is present continuous, for example, whatever you want to say. 
stick it in like that. So you can resize them and, and move them around to fit around your own notes. Um, okay, you can see I've got a few different modes here. So I can write in bold, I can write in italics, uh, underline, to be honest, I don't really use those ones, but it can be useful if you're making notes. What I do use a lot though is strike through. So if I want to show a student, this is an error, you know, I can show that, okay, this is not how you do it. It's kind of useful. Okay, so that's it for the text tools. Uh, next thing, this, uh, let's go to a, a blank whiteboard up here, just so you can see. Um, next thing here is a little maths toolbar. So if you are a math tutor, or if you are teaching physics or trigonometry, anything like that, uh, you know, you have a little ruler tool, um, which you can just, you know, adjust to fit over things. And then you've got a, tractor which does the same thing um, and we've got this little thing for measuring angles uh, I will admit I am NOT a math teacher I'm not good at this stuff so <laughs> um, but yeah some some people have told me it's it's fairly useful um, okay so the next thing I've got this pointer so I want to draw your attention here the student will see this little glowing orange dot very useful also, uh, for example, if I scroll down to the bottom of this document, my students might still be scrolled up. I can't scroll for them. So if I click down here with my pointer, they will automatically be brought down or back up to the same point as me. So that is very useful if I'm working with portrait documents. Next thing is my zoom. Okay, so I can zoom in and I can zoom out. Pretty simple. Go back to normal. Um, okay, and then I've got our remove objects we looked at already. So if you want to see how this looks on the document, if I click clear, proceed, it'll just get rid of all of the notes that I drew in there earlier. The last little thing, I've got this download page button. If I click on this, it will download the current whiteboard with my notes and stuff as a PDF file. So if you want to save your notes, that's a nice way to do it. Okay, so um, that's everything in the toolbar on the left. Uh, let's look over here on the right hand side. I'll change to this, this little guy. Okay, so um, you can see our add materials, which we looked at before, and we'll look at it in more detail in another video. Uh, but I want to look at this toolbox. So if you are a language teacher or you are a physics or a math teacher, this is useful. Uh, for me, it's actually not so important because I'm an English teacher and we don't have many conjugations. But let's say I'm doing French. So I can search for a verb here, go here, search, and it will give me a language table. So it'll open it as another tab. And here I have all of the different conjugations of the verb go here. So uh, very useful for most languages for English. Not really that useful because we don't have conjugations like that. Um, another thing I have um, is I can click on formula. This is if you're set up to be a math teacher. So, oh God, I've got to think of some formula now and I am not a math teacher. Let's see if I can think. Uh, triangle. Okay, it's searching. Fingers crossed everyone. Okay, it's giving me a function for a triangle. I wasn't sure. So, um, here we go. This gives me all of these um, little formulae, some of them are quite big formulae, and yep, <laughs> it is completely double dutch to me, so I'm going to click on this one. What it will do is basically add this, um, click on add to whiteboard, it'll add it as an image to the whiteboard. Oh, sorry, I've got to be on a new whiteboard. Sorry about that. Um, let me go again to my formula, add it to my whiteboard. So yeah, basically this will add it as an image. So, you know, it's something I can, I can use to, to kind of draw or to illustrate a point. Uh, all you math teachers, uh, I don't know, put something in the YouTube comments below if you think this is useful or not. I honestly have no idea, but it seems like it should be to me. Um, okay, the next thing we're going to look at are the different view modes. So up here we can see uh, I've got some options. So I can click on audio only class 
basically that will turn off the students video I don't know any students turn off their video um, streams useful if your student has a weak connection um, so obviously the video is taking up a lot of their data um, or their their you know um, their, their connection and you can just have the audio this one here full screen goes to full screen uh, standard class what we're looking at now now these two uh, conversation mode hello good for conversation classes you can see I've got the class chat in one place I'm here a bit bigger so you can see my beautiful face my students will appear here uh, again if it's a one-on-one -on -one, it'll be the same size uh, if it is a group class you'll see like a couple of smaller uh, little videos here um, this is useful for obviously if you're having a conversation and you just want to be a bit more personal see your student but also if your student is using a mobile phone you know it's really small so uh, it's better sometimes to switch between this mode and the next one whiteboard only which takes away the um, little video at the side there so here we go you can see the same thing so again this is useful if your student is using a phone and you know the the screen is quite small so it allows you to zoom in and really focus on things okay uh, but for me I'll go back to conversation mode uh, last little thing hello last little thing I'm going to show you here you can see I've got this uh, URL in my PDF now in the original PDF file uh, I would be able to click on that and open a link but here of course uh, I can't do that if the links worked uh, on the board it would become really cluttered it would be very easy to accidentally click the link you're trying to click on this object to delete it and you open a link be a nightmare so uh, of course sometimes you do want to share a link with your students so if I go here to the chat um, I can type you know www.google.com very original so you can actually click on that link then and open it in a new tab and when your uh, student clicks on it they'll see it in the new tab as well very useful um, you know you can you can pass something to your student actually one that I use a lot I'll show you as a quick tip is fast.com Netflix use this but it's a little internet speed test so you can ask your student oh can you please check your internet speed let's see I'm doing okay so um, yeah that's a nice little trick fast.com um, okay, so listen for this little video lesson. That's everything. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, put it in the comments down below. And uh, I will see you in our next tutorial. Bye.